welcome back to the garage everyone well we've got our old 472 here and it's looking pretty good it looks pretty stock but uh, there's some things I've done to it I've removed nearly all of the emissions equipment simply because it's a 1971 model and no one really cares um, and none of those devices did anything to make the engine run better they just made it run a little cleaner in 1971 but these days it just really doesn't matter. Uh, the last two emissions controls that I have in place are the, uh, the Thermac valve here in the breather. I've got it deactivated. The vacuum line is plugged up and I've got this hose, hose pulled off here for the moment uh, and it has this little cover here on the exhaust manifold. All you GM guys know what this is for. It takes hot air from around the exhaust manifold, pipes it through the breather. You know, when the engine is first cranked, to get hot air into the engine, to get the engine up to operating temperature as quickly as possible to avoid the extra emissions that an on choke situation will give you. So they get the engine heated up as quickly as possible and then there, this valve will open and the air will come in from here and not from there. Anyway, all right, enough of that. All right, the other thing that's still left on the car is the charcoal canister. This one is not too bad. I kind of like this one. I'm debating on whether or not I want to keep it, actually. So what this thing does is it sucks up gasoline vapors after you turn the engine off. There's a line that comes from the fuel tank, and there's a line that comes from the intake manifold or the carburetor. So you turn the engine off. Any gasoline vapors that are left in the carburetor and the intake manifold. Uh, see, this? the engine pulls a vacuum on this thing, right? So you've got a vacuum on that all the time and then when you turn the engine off the vacuum that was on this goes and sucks those fumes out of the intake manifold into this it's a big charcoal filter in here okay and it absorbs the gasoline vapors and it keeps the smell in there uh, also takes vapors from the fuel tank now so this is why let's say you have a 19 a car made 1965 doesn't have the, the charcoal canister on it you turn it off Wait five minutes, you come back out to your car, it smells like gasoline. Well, that was just the way things were back then. No one cared. All right, that's called evaporative emissions. Gasoline vapors leaking into the air after you turn your car off. Depends on how you think about it, right? Is it, is, is it a little stinky? Yeah, yeah. Some people hate that. My wife hates the smell of gasoline. Personally, I don't mind it. But having a little bit of gasoline vapor uh, drift into the air, eh, it's not really that good for the air. So, yeah, you know. It's, uh, it just kind of contributes to the smog and uh, the whole smog thing. But then again, I don't run this car enough for it, it to be an issue, right? If there was a, if there was a, a you know, millions of these cars on, still on the road, it'd be a problem. But it's not. There's, there aren't that many left. There's a fair number, but they're not run enough to worry about having this emissions equipment still active. I've, al I've also removed the smog pump. You can't see it down there. I've installed a kit to make the pulleys work and all that kind of stuff. And I plugged up the uh, air injection ports in the heads with some, I got a kit from uh, MTS. So uh, they used to be called maximum torque specialties. The other piece of emissions equipment that I removed was the thermally controlled uh, switch, which uh, only allowed vacuum advance to the distributor when the engine was running down the road in a steady state in third gear. There was a switch, there's a, wire, there's a hot wire that comes from the transmission. When the transmission gets into third gear, bullcrap. You know, eliminating vacuum advance to the distributor at idle or very low speeds was just a way to try to limit emissions before catalytic converters were implemented in 1975. When, in 1975, when the cats came in, meow, they stopped doing that. They put the full manifold vacuum advance back to the distributors uh, because they no longer had to worry about all, all idle and off idle emissions. So that little device is gone. Also, the anti-dieseling solenoid is gone. I removed that because it's just worthless nowadays. The gasoline's much better. This engine is tuned like it's 1965. It's not tuned like it's 1971 or two or three or four. I've got full manifold vacuum advance going to the distributor all the time. Just like my Corvette. My Corvette's a 78. Anyway, that's a quick review of early 70s GM emissions equipment. So, what exactly are we going to do today? Well, I've often thought that a 7 point whatever liter, what is it, 7.7? .7? I forget. It's a 472. 
It breathes through this. It breathes through this little hole right here. All right? Really? Okay. So I often thought, you know, we could do better than that, people. We really can. I don't want this engine to look, you know, tarted up. I, I want it to look stock. So I thought to myself, self, what can you do to this stock breather to make it breathe better? Yes, I know you guys out there, you purists, are probably having a heart attack right about now. And you're probably thinking about lots of thermal efficiencies and you got a bunch of equations rattling around your head. Oh, actually, the air temperature and the air flow rate, that's really all the engine needs. And blah, 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 blah. I don't really care. Okay, here's the deal. You see that snorkel? You see this empty spot over here? Where this pretty GM sticker is? Now, granted, I yeah, th this GM sticker looks it does look pretty nice. I, I I agree. But this little area right here is the same dimension as the area over there where that snorkel is attached. Now that's interesting. Don't you think? That leads me to this. So I got to hunting around. Look what I found on eBay. This is a air cleaner from a 1971 Cadillac DeVille, 472. Look at that, exact same breather as that. And yeah, I do have the top, it's over there, okay? Now, so then you say, well, I could take this off. I could cut this out, right? Take this breather off, cut a slit in this where the sticker is. The sticker would have to go bye-bye, yeah, I know, but anyway. Cut a slit right here, expand that out, make myself a nice little flange, and take this snorkel and stick it on this breather, and I would have a dual snorkel air cleaner for my 472, and it would look stock. To the uninitiated, it would look stock. To a Cadillac enthusiast or a GM person who knows a lot about it, they would look at it and go, oh, that's not stock. Or when, or man, where did, where did you get that really cool upgrade option? Or, you know, you could, you could just make up some, oh, yeah, that's the LZ5 performance pack because they only released five of those in 1971. You know, whatever. <laughs> you get my point. The thermal, the Thermac valves here on this one here and that one right there, uh, those have got to go. So my goal is a dual snorkel uh, black in color. We'll keep the black color. Uh, air cleaner that looks stock and allows the engine to breathe and develop maybe a, a few more horsepower. We'll see. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get started and let's see how it goes. All right, you may ask yourself, I wonder if he knows what he's doing. The answer would be, eh. It's not exactly what I wanted, but I'll take it. All right, that's a little gnarly, I admit, but uh, this was the first spot weld, and it's been a while since I've done work like this, so sue me. Um, <laughs> we're going to get all four of these spot welds drilled out. I'm going to try to do a better job on that one, uh, and then we're going to get this uh, snorkel off of the breather, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that once we get the spot welds free, this is just a press fit, and there's no other welds in there, Hope, hoping we can just pull this off but uh, after we drill out all the spot welds so we'll see how it goes uh, we went to school on the first one and we did a little better job on the second one did a little drill out of the spot weld on the back side there and successfully avoided dr drilling through the flange on the snorkel this this trust me this end is loose so once we get those other two spot welds on the other side this thing will just slip right off all right, there you have it, folks. One snorkel removed from a salvage donor car air cleaner. A little ganked up there a little bit, but it'll be all right. Once we install this on my breather, we will uh, we'll use the MIG welder and, and fill these in a little bit, so uh, and do a little grinding, and and I think it'll turn out okay. Just got to be careful though, because this metal is pretty thin, so we're gonna need to turn our welder. We're gonna to need to turn it down pretty far. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this Thermac. All right, I got the grinder out and I 
ground down that end of it and we're going to try to hammer it through that that way we'll see what happens well that wasn't too bad all right so we need to take this top uh vacuum canister off looks like we have to bend that little tang there and fold that back to get that off have i ever done this before no i have not but I've kicked the camera stand plenty of times. All right, I'm going to have to figure out how to get that off of there. All right, we've got the uh, little flange pulled up out of the snorkel. I'm going to bend this little piece of metal up a little farther so I can get this thing out of there. It's spot welded right here. Uh, so we've got that shaft coming down through there and connected to the flap. And I've got the, the flap is loose. I've got the pin pulled out. But uh, still got a little bit of work to get this mess off of here. So, uh, all right, I've got this little vacuum pod out of the uh, snorkel. This little L-shaped bracket just slips down into the uh, flapper there, real easy, like, and uh, no issue getting that out of there. So that leaves us with a minor issue here. We'll need to uh, do something about this. Clearly, uh, these two small holes here, we can just weld up cut a small sliver of sheet metal from my uh, scrap metal stash and weld in there and I'll probably just do the same thing here and weld that up as well. Need to weld up this little hole here, that little hole there. Got to pull that flap out of there obviously. For this I think I'm just going to cut this off. I'm not going to worry about drilling and all that kind of mess. I'm just going to get my grinder and yeah, cut that right off of there and cut myself a nice circle of steel and weld it in place because it's going to be underneath and you know nobody's going to see it so it's not going to matter all right we've got the cut off wheel and we got that little uh tube of metal off of there not a huge deal really took a few minutes and i didn't want to be too aggressive with it wanted to be gentle this this metal is quite thin next up i'm going to cut a little circle of metal and i'm going to weld up that hole and i'm going to cut this up and weld up those holes all right got some old scrap metal uh, from an old uh, barrel i cut up a while back um and gonna use this as my template right and a sharpie made myself a circle gonna get my tin snips out gonna cut that out and weld it in there All right, don't want to get too carried away. Uh, so there it is. That is probably the worst welding job of a piece of barrel sheet metal uh, to a air cleaner that has ever occurred in the history of the world. And those two little ones there, I'm gonna cut out some sheet metal to weld into these two holes here. All right, it's the next day and our epoxy's had time to dry. So I elected to use uh, small metal pieces that I cut out of my scrap metal heap with some tin snips and I epoxied them in here to fill up the holes the little holes I just put epoxy in them um, this metal is very very thin and I I was having a really hard time um, welding and I was blowing right through it so I was like all right stop stop what you're doing this is back here was uh, better because this piece of steel was a lot thicker and this flange there was a flange here that I was welding to and it was a lot thicker so I didn't have as hard of a time with that uh, this will this will uh, get painted up and it'll look it, it'll be on the bottom anyway you won't see it so it doesn't matter the plan for this is to sand this down really smooth make it look nice and then you know we'll paint it uh, after we get it mounted on the uh, on the old breather uh, and then I have this really cool, uh, I have some bling we're going to put here. So any kind of ripples or kind of imperfections uh, will be covered up by the bling. You'll see later. All right. The way I work, things usually get worse before they get better. So I've got this uh, JB Weld sanded down here. Got that little hole there sanded down. Got that one sanded down. Those two up there are looking pretty good. 
the metal was a little dippy in there so I filled that in and I filled in a few dips here and there with the with the JB weld this hole here was pretty big and I I clipped a piece of metal to match the shape and I JB welded it in place and that worked out pretty well and I've got this pretty smooth there's still some dips here there's a couple of ridges here and there so I'm gonna work on this a little longer I think I'm debating on either switching to a smoother sandpaper or I may apply yet another layer of JB Weld to uh, try to smooth that out some more. All right, we'll see what happens next here. Okay, folks, I saved you the gory details of drilling into a perfectly good air breather for my early 70s 472. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to admit it, it took me a while to get the courage up to do that. So, uh, I'm kind of a purist. I'm kind of a purist when it comes to air breathers on cars. I like the stock look, but my goal here is to make something that's a little more, you know, performance oriented, uh, but retain a stock look. So I got the uh, outline drawn of the hole we need to make, and I started by drilling some uh, some pilot holes there, and uh, just plain old ten snips is going to do the rest, and some pliers and whatnot, and we'll make ourselves a rough hole. Now, it won't be as clean as that one, obviously. It won't be anywhere near as clean as that because that one was punched out with a machine. Um, but, in the long run, no one's going to see this because these flanges that I'm going to make, these gnarly ones, uh, they're going to be up inside the snorkel. You're not going to see them. Nobody's going to see them. So, it's, it's going to be okay. See, I'm, I'm setting myself up, you know, mentally for this, right? So, <laughs> and I, uh, the way I'm going to fix this is... Uh, with some uh, right now the plan is a little spot welds on the corner and uh, probably some JB weld on the top and bottom and, and again you shouldn't be able to see any of that stuff when I'm done alright we'll got more later alright pardon the wind noise I got the fans going on in, here in the shop here today so uh, alright got my hole cut out got my, my flanges made up use a drill bit and some tin snips and some pliers and whatnot and I know it looks gnarly man it looks awful uh, but once you get the snorkel over that you can't see any of that mess and so there's the clean hole the original one and then once we once we get the snorkel over the top of it you'll see you know the hole will be mm, a little gnarly but uh, once you get the snorkel over it it darkens it up and you can't really see a whole lot of what's going on there anyway I tend to get overly concerned about things that people can't see that's why I paint the underneath of the seat rails on my Mercedes. So it's, anyway, I'm 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 nuts. You guys know that, right? I'm like I'm like certifiable. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try to uh, sand a bunch of this paint off of this thing so that uh, we can uh, have some good surfaces to weld against and put some JB weld on. So I'm gonna I wanna do some spot welds. I wanna do some spot welds on the corners and some JB weld around it, and then <laughs> I think that'll hold it on. All right, folks, we're getting close here. Got uh, most of the paint uh, scraped off here and uh, getting ready for some epoxy. I got this hole opened up a little bit more. I've been doing some test fits. I'll show you what we got going on here. I'm going to give you all the gnarly details. I mean, this looks like crap. I know it does, but uh, anyway, so this is our snorkel. All right, there we go. There's the gory details. That's what it looks like down inside there. We'll get that cleaned up with some acetone, some carb clean, stuff like that. I might even paint down inside that thing. Who knows? But uh, that's what the that's what the air is going to see when they get when it goes into the uh, air cleaner housing. Well, I think this is what you call being all in. I am definitely all in on this one, folks. Making the decision to do this modification kind of tormented me for a while, but uh, you know what? I think it's going to be all right. I'm going to go ahead and leave this thermac valve in place the stock one it's too much of a pain to remove and it'll be fine uh, right now i've got the donor snorkel epoxy i've got the jb weld the conventional jb weld not the quick stuff so this takes a while to set up so i've got it just gently clamped there you know straight up and down so it won't fall anyway so i've got the jb weld gelling and um you know pretty gnarly but uh, <laughs> but we've got to get uh, we've got to get this thing firmly affixed before we can go any further with you know painting and more sanding and stuff. Uh, so I didn't put any JB weld under the ends. 
I'm going to put a couple of spot welds on either either side of it. So I think that'll I think that will hold it permanently. Thing. All right, folks, we're going to let this thing sit for a good long while, and then the next thing you see will be probably a couple of days later. All right, folks, this is where we're at. We have a dual snorkel air cleaner for a Cadillac 472 cubic inch engine. Uh, the donor snorkel has been JB welded in the center part along this seam and the seam in the bottom. And I left these two for spot welding. Spot welding on this side doesn't look that great. Um, looks a little better over here. But after I get after it with a grinding wheel and uh, put a good thick coat of engine high gloss enamel on it and you set it way back there on the engine like that, you won't ever see that mess. So I've been doing a little hand sanding. I, really, I'm just scuffing it up and uh, getting it ready to paint. I'm not going to paint the Thermac valve because it's just a pain. I'm going to leave it alone. I'll tape it off. I'm not going to paint the inside. There's no reason for it. The paint in there, I think it's actually a, uh, this thing has a thin powder coating on it. I'm assuming that's what that is from back in the day. I'm going to tape off the interior and just clean it up. I'm not going to paint it because there's, well, there's no need. And I scuffed up around the edge on the bottom and I'll paint that. And I'm going to tape off the center part. Again, I'm not going to paint that area. It's in pretty good shape. I'll just clean it up, tape it off. I'm not going to paint that. We're going to get this thing cleaned up a little bit, get a little paint on it, and I think it's going to look pretty doggone good. And after we get it on the engine and get our new sticker on there, it's going to look bad to the bone. Hey, welcome back to the mobile paint booth, everyone. Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's all about uh, using what you got, right? Okay, we got her all taped up. And uh, we're going to start off with a dusting coat of Duplicolor Engine Enamel with Ceramic. And this is Gloss Black. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the paint drying area of the garage. And uh, we've got our breather hanging up here and uh, drying out. So there it will stay for, I don't know, a good long while. 12 hours or so. And then we'll put everything back together and get it on the car. I'm liking this. It looks really cool. And before we get it on the car, we've got some extra goodies for right there. All right, let's get our paper off of the breather. All right, there we go, folks. Got a little rust right there. We've got to wipe that out. Again, I didn't paint this area, so I've got to wipe that out a little bit. No big deal. All right, I think that's got it. It's time to put our bling on the breather. Pardon the uh, wind noise in the background. We've got some cooling devices running in the shop. It's pretty hot out. And it's hot in here. All right, we've got our sticker centered from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. We're all good. We have a tape hinge in place. Alright folks, there you have it. Got a little uh, extra bling from the internet. These stickers are actually for the, I believe they're for the Eldorados and the fuel injection cars. I think mostly for the fuel injection cars though. You guys that know more about it than I, you know, put your comments in the in the section down below. Let me know, you know, which specific models the sticker came on. I don't really care. I like it. I think it's cool. Anyway, they're not supposed to go on the DeVille, but eh, I don't care. Anyway, 
There you go, folks. We got a dual snorkel air cleaner for a 472 Cadillac. Let's get this hot mama on the car. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the stock dual snorkel air cleaner for a Cadillac 472 cubic inch engine. Uh, or 500 or 425 or 368. I think this turned out really well. The top of the air cleaner, I did not paint that or polish it in any way. I just kind of shined it up with a little WD-40 for the uh, for the video. Uh, it's got some uh, patina on it, if you will. You know, it's got scratches and some rust marks. And that way, it looks stock, right? So if somebody were to pop the hood on this car at a car show, you know, to the uninitiated, they'd look at this and go, oh, wow, nice Cadillac, nice clean engine, blah, blah, blah. They would not know that this dual snorkel thing is not stock. You know, somebody who knew a little something about it, they could probably spot it right away. But, you know, most folks, I don't think so. And we got ourselves a nice uh, Cadillac 472 sticker. We found that at, uh, I believe it was called Original Parts Group, something like that. The link will be in the description down below. So, all right, folks, that's all for now. This project is done. I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click the little bell down below. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.